School opening will not necessarily mean traditional face-to-face -face learning in the classroom, especially now during the time of pandemic. The physical opening will depend on the risk of very degrading or classification of a certain community pursuant to guidelines from the Department of Health, the Interagency Task Force or the IAPF, for the management of emerging infectious diseases in the Philippines and the Office of the President. The learning delivery modalities that schools can adopt may be one or a combination of the following, depending on the COVID-19 restrictions and the particular context of the learners in the school or locality. First is the traditional face-to-face -face learning. In areas under the moderate and high-risk severity grading, this is not possible. However, there are learners with disabilities whose conditions require face-to-face -face instruction. This will be the subject of further discussion within DepEd, with partners, and with parents. Traditional face-to-face -face learning refers to a learning delivery modality where the students and the teacher are both physically present in the classroom and there are opportunities for active engagement, immediate feedback, and socio-emotional development of learners. Face-to-face -face option may also be feasible in very low-risk areas such as the geographically isolated, disadvantaged, and conflict-affected areas or the GIPCA, with no history of infection and very low and easily monitored external contacts, but with teachers and learners living in the vicinity of the school. Any face-to-face -face learning delivery must have proper risk assessment and must adhere to the health protocols in place. Potential learning spaces in the community near the school may be explored to add spaces for the conduct of classes with the appropriate social distancing. Advantages of face-to-face -face classes Learning occurs casually and directly. Students are removed from daily routines to sit in the classroom. Questions and comments from other students can assess learning. Teachers and students take cues from speech and body language. Doctors estimate that the face alone has 250,000 expressions giving additional cues. Students establish new contacts and friendships with peers. Active collaborative learning takes place. Second learning modality is the distance learning. This refers to a learning delivery modality where learning takes place between the teacher and the learners who are geographically remote from each other during the instruction. There are two types of distance learning. First is the modular distance learning. Second is the online distance learning. Modular distance learning. Learning is in the form of individualized instruction that allows learners to use self-learning modules or SLMs in print or digital format, whichever is applicable in the context of the learner. Also, other learning resources like learning materials, textbooks, activity sheets, study guides, and other study materials. Learners access electronic copies of learning materials on a computer, tablet, PC, or smartphone. CDs, DVDs, USB storage, and computer-based applications can all be used to deliver e-learning materials including offline e-books. The teacher takes the responsibility of monitoring the progress of the learners. The learners may ask assistance from the teacher via email, telephone, text message, instant messaging, etc. Where possible, the teacher shall do home visits to learners needing remediation or assistance. Any member of the family or other stakeholder in the community needs to serve as a parent teachers. Next is online distance learning. It features the teacher as facilitator, engaging learners' active participation 
through the use of various technologies access to the internet while they are geographically remote from each other during the instruction. The internet is used to facilitate learner-teacher and peer-to-peer -peer communication. Online learning allows live synchronous instruction. It requires participants to have good and stable internet connection. It is more interactive than the other types of distance learning. The responses are real-time. The learners may download materials from the internet, complete and submit assignments online, attend webinars and virtual classes. This is practiced effectively by using a learning management systems or related technologies. The DepEd Commons and LR portal fall in this category. TV radio-based instruction utilizes LMS converted to video lessons for television-based instruction and SLMs converted to radio script for radio-based instruction. Distance learning modality is most viable for independent learners and learners supported by periodic supervision of parents and guardians. The change will be in dealing with learners not capable of independent learning. This is the subject of further discussion within DepEd and with partners and parents. As with most teaching methods, online learning also has its own set of positives and negatives. Decoding and understanding these positives and negatives will help institute in creating strategies for more efficient delivery of the lessons, ensuring an uninterrupted learning journey for the students. So here are the advantages of distance learning. Distance learning offers teachers an efficient way to deliver lessons to students. Online learning has a number of tools such as videos, PDF, podcasts, and teachers can use all these tools as part of their lesson plans. By extending the lesson plan beyond traditional textbooks to include online resources, teachers are able to become more efficient educators. It allows students to attend classes from any location of their choice. It also allows schools to, do, to reach out to a more extensive network of students instead of being restricted by geographically boundaries. Additionally, online lectures can be recorded, archived, and shared for future reference. This allows students to access the learning material at a time of their comfort. Third, online education is far more affordable as compared to physical learning. Another advantage of online learning is reduced financial costs. This is because online learning eliminates the cost points of student transportation, student meals, and most importantly, real estate. Additionally, all the course or study materials are available online, thus creating a paperless learning environment which is more affordable while also being beneficial to the environment. Next, it improves student attendance. Since online classes can be taken from home or location of choice, there are fewer chances of students missing out on lessons. Lastly, it suits a variety of learning styles. Every student has a different learning journey and a different learning style. Some students are visual learners, while some students prefer to learn through audio. Similarly, some students thrive in the classroom and other students are solo learners who get distracted by large groups. The online learning system with its range of options and resources can be personalized in many ways. It, it is the best way to create a perfect learning environment suited to the needs of each student. What are the disadvantages of online distance learning? First, inability to focus on screens. For many students, one of the biggest challenges of online learning is the struggle with focusing on the screen for long period of time. With online learning, there is also a greater chance for students to be easily distracted by social media or other sites. Therefore, it is imperative for the teachers to keep their online classes crisp, engaging, and interactive to help students stay focused on the lesson. 
next is technology issues. Another key challenge of online classes is internet connectivity. While internet penetration has grown in leaps and bounds over the past few years, in smaller cities and towns, a consistent connection with decent speed is a problem. Without a consistent internet connection for students or teachers, there can be a lack of continuity in learning for the child. This is detrimental to the education process. Another one is sense of isolation. Students can learn a lot from being in the company of their peers. However, in an online class, there are minimal physical interactions between students and teachers. This often results in a sense of isolation for the students. In this situation, it is imperative that the school allow for other forms of communication between the students, peers, and teachers. This can include online messages, emails, and video conferencing that will allow for face-to-face -face interaction and reduce the sense of isolation. Next is teacher training. Online learning requires teachers to have a basic understanding of using digital forms of learning. However, this is not the case always. Very often, teachers have very basic understanding of technology. Sometimes, they don't even have the necessary resources and tools to conduct online classes. To combat this, it is important for schools to invest in training teachers with the latest technology updates so that they can conduct their online classes seamlessly. Next is the screen time. Many parents are concerned about the health hazards of having their children spend so many hours staring at the screen. This increase in screen time is one of the biggest concerns and disadvantages of online learning. Sometimes, students also develop bad posture and other physical problems due to staying hunched in front of the screen. A good solution to this would be to give the students plenty of breaks from the screen to refresh their mind and their mind. The third modality is the homeschooling. It is an alternative delivery mode or ADM that aims to provide learners with equal access to quality basic education through a home-based environment to be facilitated by the qualified parents, guardians, or tutors who have undergone relevant training. Homeschooling can be very stressful, but it is also rewarding. However, homeschooling is not for every parent, and parents unprepared or unwilling to make the commitment to be an effective teacher should avoid it. Here are some benefits of homeschooling. First, determine the curriculum and their children's schooling schedule. Create strong bonds with their children. Adapt teaching methods best suiting how their children learn. Spend extra time with their children on difficult concepts and move ahead after children master a subject or a concept. Lastly, discuss controversial topics at their discretion with their children. Here are some disadvantages of homeschooling. Spend time reviewing numerous curriculum programs up to their standards and best suiting their children's learning needs. Be around their children all day long. This can be difficult when children become restless and misbehave. Spend large amounts of money on books and other learning materials. Constantly adapt to be effective teachers. And speak with other people homeschooling their children to get ideas about solving difficult problems. The next learning modality is blended learning. This refers to a learning modality that allows for a combination of face-to-face -face and online distance learning, or ODL, face-to-face -face and modular distance learning, or MDL, face-to-face -face and TV or radio-based instruction, or RBI, and face-to-face -face learning and a combination with two or more types of distance learning. 
One of the most obvious terms after the pandemic is the term new normal. The new normal in education is the increased use of online learning tools. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered new ways of learning. All around the world, educational institutions are looking toward online learning platforms to continue with the process of educating students. The new normal now is a transformed concept of education with online learning at the core of this transformation. Today, digital learning has emerged as a necessary resource for students and schools all over the world. Now let's talk about the structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching. The first one is the formal or the traditional setup. Formal learning is learning that is delivered in a systematic, intentional way. Formal education system is a classroom base managed by trained formal school teachers. Next is the Alternative Learning Systems, or what we call ALS. It is a parallel learning system in the Philippines that provides a practical option to the existing formal instruction. When one does not have or cannot access formal education in schools, ALS is an alternate or substitute. ALS includes both the non-formal and informal sources of knowledge and skills. ALS non-formal education happens outside the classroom. Community-based, usually conducted at community learning centers, barangay multipurpose hall, libraries, or at home. Managed by ALS learning facilitators such as mobile teachers, district ALS coordinators, instructional managers at an agreed schedule and venue between the learners and facilitators. The third one is alternative delivery modes or what we call ADF. These are tried and tested alternative modalities of education delivery within the confines of the formal system that allow schools to deliver quality education to marginalized students and those at risk of dropping out in order to help them overcome personal, social, and economic constraints in their schooling. These are the types of alternative delivery modes. First is the MISOSA or Modified In-School, Off-School Approach, the E-Impact, or the Enhanced Instructional Management by Parents, Community, and Teachers, and the OHSP or the Open High School Program. MISOSA is currently designed to address issue of congestion class, help pupils who are enrolled but habitual absentees, living in conflict or disaster areas, chronically ill or engage in earning a living to augment family income. How is MISOSA implemented? Use of self-instructional materials or SIMS that contains lessons to be learned for the day include learning objectives and activities to work on. Next, utilization of community school. As a laboratory for learning aside from the classroom, half of the class stays with the teacher while the other half stay with the teacher facilitator in the community school. In compliance with existing policies, DO number 23 series of 2005 talks about allotment. DO number 33 series of 2004 about the grading system and BO number 53 series of 2011 policy guidelines. Next is the involvement of the stakeholders. Grade 4, 5, and 6 pupils, classroom teachers, teacher facilitators. Next is the Enhanced Instructional Management by Parents, Community, and Teachers, or the E-Impact. A quality alternative delivery mode for elementary education, a 
technology-enhanced alternative delivery mode, developed to address high student population and dropouts, management system where the parents, teachers, and community collaborate. Last is the OHSP or the Open High School Program. The OHSP is an alternative mode of secondary education that uses distance learning. It caters to learners who are unable to attend the regular class program due to physical impairment, work, financial difficulties, distance of home to school, and other justifiable and legitimate reasons.